Ta-da! Who's ready to talk about Star Wars Hunters? Yeah! <laughs> pew, pew, pew! Let's hunt some Star Wars. Um, so, yeah, do we think that that was the big video game thing that was rumoring? Going, I, I going guess. I didn't, I didn't see a whole lot of the, the rumors going around. Something about, like, a smaller shooter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that seems right. It it feels just like a I mean it's free to play and it's it feels like a mobile game. Yep. Which I I didn't have high expectations for whatever the next Star Wars game was going to be anyways, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> I was disappointed by the direct. I usually am. But what are you going to do? See, the, I'm, I'm like the only person who any time a Direct comes out, I'm like... A Direct? What that was. A Nintendo Direct. Oh. I was like... You don't know the, you don't know the jargon. That's fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm always the one person who's like, are they going to put Game Boy games on the Switch now? <laughs> Please, Nintendo. Oh. But, I mean, other than Golden Sun, what do you want on the Switch? Uh... I mean, yeah, Golden Sun would be my top choice, but like anything, like I I grew up playing Game Boy games, even like the bad ones, or the lesser known ones. I wouldn't say bad ones, but like. Did you tweet that we were alive? No. Oh. I thought you said you were gonna do it. <laughs> no, I asked if you had done it, and you just said no. I'm gonna do it now. Maybe. Um. Hello, chat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hello, hello. Rain Man, Artie Films. Oh, uh, right off the bat, well, we got a couple of super chats, but it, <clears throat> this one just popped up. Ferris. Of course, Ferris. Ferris. <laughs> with a generous super chat. Thank you Thanks, so much, Ferris. Ferris. <laughs> what am I gonna see? I always want to yell at Ferris. Like, get out of here with your generosity. <laughs> Dan23, Tim Peterson, Elijah Neal. Uh, who else we got? Star Wars Decoded. Big Star Darklighter is in oh. the house. Hi. <laughs> Always excited to have you. <clears throat> Zach, Zach Bowen. Who else? Sleep of Giants. Wolf Boy. Oh my goodness. Okay, we, we got another big super chat. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, Bill Devers, thank you so much for your generous oh, wow. super thank chat. You, Bill. Uh, says, <clears throat> excuse me, reading Light of the Jedi and liking it. One Jedi has a power that connects and allows communication across great distances through the Force. Do you think this is foreshadowing between Rey, Kylo, or something different? You guys are the best. Thank you. Uh, interesting. It just. All it makes me think of is Cerebro from X-Men. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's probably connected to that for sure. Connected to this idea that, yeah, you can communicate yeah. and connect across the galaxy. Yeah, and maybe maybe you don't have to be a dyad in the Force for, for it to be possible. Because... I mean, Luke and Kylo weren't a dyad, and he was able to do something similar, so... Yeah, and like I bet I bet making a dyad makes it easier, or maybe the force will just like make it happen. You've got like a direct line if you're a dyad. Uh, yeah. Um. There's no fees, no long distance fees if you're right. a dyad. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh, doesn't it, didn't you say it happened with Ezra and Kanan? That's kind of like of. that's kind of um. What's the word I'm looking for? Disputed? I don't know. It's possible. Debatable? Debatable, yes. <laughs> uh, it's possible that Kanan did like a projection of some sort, or it's possible that he just Batmaned out of there. Like he was talking to Ezra, and then when Ezra looked away, Kanan dipped out. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think that is definitely possible. And it, I love that in the High Republic, you're we're seeing all these Jedi that have like certain kind of special talents almost like uh almost like mutants <laughs> but it's more like 
the way that they see the force. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And uh, I really, if you haven't watched my interview with Daniel Jose Older, I really like what he talked about just seeing the Jedi acting without war. Just like, what are they like when it's not wartime Mm -hmm. and they just get to have the force? And so, like, one of one of his characters is just a mechanic. And, like, he uses the Force to help him be a good mechanic. And that's, that's it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he can do more than just that. But, like, that's his thing. Uh-huh. He likes being a mechanic. Yeah. I think that is some good insight. <laughs> people are, oh, people are upset about your shirt. Oh, I guess, that is, I guess that is a bit of a betrayal, isn't it? Wow. We know who There's Alex no is There's no hidden message for. here. I just saw the shirt when I was looking like, what am I going to wear today? Hey, it would be nice to plug our friends. I forgot that Laura is not our friend this week. <laughs> we are not friends for tomorrow and tomorrow only. Well, for two maybe- days. Huh? Tomorrow's not the match. D- not tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Uh, for Friday. But, I mean... So you get a whole extra day. You thought tomorrow was the match. You get a whole extra day. Oh, man. How much can I learn in one day? <laughs> <laughs> not enough. No. I'm so excited. Well, since we're talking about it, uh, let me read some of the super chats that we've already gotten. Uh, and then I'll get into some Schmodown talk. Uh, Chris Fields... No, wait, that's not the first one. Let me go to the... Here we go. Sleep of Giants had the first one. Thanks so much, Sleep of Giants. And it says, search your bad feelings about this. (laughs) That is a quote from episode 10. Written by an artificial intelligence. (coughs) Uh, Go check out Blue Bantha Milk company uh their youtube channel we did voices for their <clears throat> you're right i my voice is like really raspy for some reason <coughs> <clears throat> sorry uh yes blue bantha milk company did episode 10 written by ai we did voices for it it was really fun <laughs> Uh, Chris Fields with a super chat. Everyone told me not to walk on that beach. Said seagulls gonna come. Poke me in the coconut. Poke me in the coconut. And they did. And they did. <laughs> Had me going like. Poo, 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 poo. <laughs> Molly was like, "Are we gonna sing today? <laughs> Am I gonna sing today? That's the question." I I sing with you. I join you in solidarity. <laughs> I don't leave you hanging. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Guys, the super chats are, are, are rolling in today oh. and I I'm I'm flattered. <laughs> Thank you. Let me let me read some more so we can get caught up here maybe. Uh <laughs> Big Stark Glider, Molly, let me hear your best Star Wars impression. Ooh. <clears throat> I'm curious to see what voice you think you can do best. I think you know. I mean, <clears throat> it's yeah. not Ray. Uh, okay, then I don't know. <laughs> hey! <laughs> we still have it. Oh, you took it's, him. It's in my office. You stole Babu. <laughs> I Babu Frick. <laughs> Droid brain go black. Blank blank. Blank blank. The droid is ready. <laughs> Oh, that's that's my best, um, Babu Frick. <laughs> I should have been like, that was a great Jar Jar or something just to throw you off. Oh, I mean, it sounds good to me. No, that's great. But... That's very good. <laughs> okay, come on, there we go. Okay, Big says 10 out of 10, Molly, that was great. Yay. <laughs> my oldest friend, yes. <laughs> I'm a regular Shirley Henderson. <laughs> Trivia. 
Um. <laughs> oh boy. We're building, oh my God. It didn't dawn on me that this is gonna get like, this set is gonna bigger go from bigger. this big to like this big today. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Nice. <laughs> um, glad you enjoyed that, Biggs. Miranda here with a super chat. Happy Wednesday. Any thoughts on Star Wars Hunters? Oh, <laughs> we jumped the gun. <laughs> well, we didn't talk that much about it. Honestly, like, no. I don't really have any thoughts at all. Uh, eh. it, it's I'm not a mobile gamer, and I know this is going to be on Switch, but we might give it a try. It's I'm sure free to I play. will. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'll play it. I'll give it a go. But usually, free to play games are like free until you know they're not, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they want you to like pay for cosmetics or whatever. But oh, is there going to be the what's it? As in, long as it's game not, transactions, I bet there will be. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about this game. This is just me speculating, but that's just what the free-to-play model is. Uh, so we'll see. If if there's not like much story to it, I'm probably not gonna get wrapped in. Um, but who knows? It might be really addicting and fun. I, Cubs fan Han keeps trying to get me to play Galaxy of Heroes, uh, and I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not. I don't play mobile games. Nothing against them. I just, I barely have enough time to play all the games that I want to play. That's true. Yeah, I, I already spend too much time on my phone. I don't need to be playing games on my phone because I cut I have... to July twenty first or whenever it comes out, and Molly's like, mm, <laughs> "Hunters." Mm. I mean, yeah. I'll. I. I will probably. I mean, I'd stream it on my Twitch. Yeah, we might do that. Especially because it's free. Or or on the YouTube channel or something. Yeah. We'll, we'll give it a go. But It's like, I'm not a big mobile gamer. I'm also not much of a shooter lover. Like, I don't, I don't love shooter games. So, doesn't quite look like my thing. But yeah. that's fine. I got squadrons and I got Fallen Order, so... I'll just put my phone in my lap. I know, Molly on Twitch, what? <laughs> when is that gonna happen again? Hopefully soon. Uh, Reefta and I will not have it free time after Friday because I'm going to win and then I'm gonna have to play Alex, so. I, I'm gonna just keep winning. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I hope you do. Because I think it would be adorable if I got to walk the belt from adorable? my office. Adorable? No, if I got to walk the belt from my I'm office. I'm the Maverick. To your office. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it would be a, a fun moment for everyone watching if I had to walk the belt from there to over there, and everyone got to watch that happen in real time. Mm hmm I agree. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Caleb Diaz, thanks for the super chat. Ryan Johnson trilogy still happening. Also, hey. Hey, Caleb. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got our, what did we say earlier? Our, <laughs> our yearly, yearly, our yearly check, -in. check in with Ryan Johnson's trilogy. I, for, I don't know where this came from, what interview uh, or report. So uh, it's an author, and I believe she writes for USA Today as well. She basically donated to a charity like a silent auction and doing that let her have a conversation or interview with daisy ridley and ryan johnson so it wasn't like a with her outlet thing but she is a reporter and writer mm -hmm. so i don't think that she like recorded it but obviously she is still talking about it but uh yeah it's just coming from someone who got to have an hour-long conversation with ryan johnson and she checked in on the, hey Hilo. she checked in on things and he was like yep it's still happening which yeah no one's asked him in like a year so yeah um are there any other people that get that question like every so often uh 
I guess maybe Zack Snyder was getting questions about whether or not the Snyder Cut was real or not, but... <laughs> It's just what do you mean the, oh like <laughs> like do, do people have to check in every so often there goes Hilo yeah digging. Hilo's digging at the carpet again I I think it's more certain actors getting asked like uh, yeah well yeah Ewan McGregor every yeah. well, six I was, months I was gonna say um oh my gosh what's his name Wolverine mm, Hugh Jackman Hugh, yeah Hugh Jackman getting asked if he's ever gonna reprise the role which if you saw his last movie it's like i think he wanted that to be the end of it but he's still gonna get that question probably sure same with like now that we have evan peters in wandavision all like basically all the old x-men actors could be asked like are you gonna show up in Mm -hmm. in the MCU universe? It does tend to happen to actors more. I'm just trying to think of like a, any other filmmaker who just every so often someone's got to check in with them be like, hey, Martin Scorsese, is your next movie still happening? Like, <laughs> but yes, we're very excited. Obviously, no idea when it's going to come out. Probably not for a while. Um, but glad to hear that it is at least not canceled still happening because there was no reason to think that it was canceled just it just <laughs> we just hadn't heard right in it it's it. just the whole thing is very strange to me <laughs> uh no this is matrick thanks for the super chat we know the hollow net has jedi dramas and palpatine propaganda do y'all think it has the equivalent of youtubers <laughs> what would they talk about haha <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I hate to think about I shivered uh, yeah I mean it's um they're probably talking about how uh Palpatine's death <laughs> was uh I don't know <laughs> I, I know where you were really <laughs> maybe going with that but yeah it, it would be people I don't feel arguing, like stepping in that it would be people arguing about if Palpatine did, any, did anything did wrong. It, yeah. I mean, there's people that do that now. The Empire did nothing wrong. People. Yeah. And, it, and then there would be people supporting the Loyalist Committee. What is this? Uh, making videos about the death of Padme and how they're going to, I don't know, get revenge. I don't know. <laughs> it could also be like... YouTubers talking about the corruption within pod racing. Sure. On the hollow net. <laughs> oh, I did do this right. Greedy squab squabbling bureaucrats. Delegates. Delegates and, and bureaucrats. That's what would be on the Star Wars hollow net. <laughs> uh Josh Thompson, thanks for the super chat. Why is the final five theme on one of the best themes of all TV? Just finished watching Battlestar after y'all's recommendation and loved it. Yeah, it's so good. The all along the watchtower, like it's not redo. Yeah, it's, it's not really its own theme. It's it's like already a song. But why am I having so much trouble figuring this out? Brian, if you're still in the chat, don't look up the final five for for uh, Battlestar. Because, spoilers. That's why. Oh, no, that's not the right tab. Uh, let's see. Uh, Got another super chat from Miranda here. Thank you so much. Uh, I want Golden Sun 2. It's the 20th anniversary. Was disappointed, but the direct was still good for me. Golden Sun is one of the best games ever. I love it to death. <laughs> I just... I never played Game Boy games except for, like... Because I didn't have one, but I would play the Mario games every once in a while on like my friends who had Game Boys. 
but that's about it. Uh, this, this is like the most simple thing, and I'm struggling so hard to <laughs> put this together. This is absurd. That goes there. Are you there. on the struggle bus today? Yeah, I really am. <laughs> okay, that goes there. The, the hot this mess one goes here. That one goes there. That's Alex how I is, feel right Alex now. Alex is on the hot mess express. I'm Chewbacca, but my brain is Han. Like, I'm just it, mentally yelling at myself. <laughs> okay, I think I've got it now. <laughs> Uh, Red Tornado 98, what's up? Thanks for the super chat. Isn't it weird that Darth Vader wants to get Han back after he just <laughs> gave him to Boba at the end of Empire Strikes Back? Still excited about it, though. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure, like, Charles Soule is trying to describe his story without giving anything away. So he says that this War of the Bounty Hunters thing is uh, everyone is trying to get Han Solo. Mm -hmm. The bounty hunters want Han Solo. Luke wants him back. Byler Valance in the bounty hunters comic is like, uh, I owe Han. I'm going to try to help him out. And then Darth Vader, for some reason, wants him, even though he already had him and then he let him go. And Charles will sentence, like, to the Empire, Han would be a valuable asset. So I would guess that maybe the Emperor says something like, I can't believe you let him go. And so then he is trying to go get Han back. Like, I don't think this is Vader necessarily going like, I have to get Han. Someone probably ordered it. Mm. <clears throat> but I do agree that it's like, <laughs> it would be funny if there's a scene of Vader going like, wait, he's that guy that han solo and i let him go oh no <laughs> oh that han solo <laughs> uh dan 23 thanks for the super chat star wars website put put art put up an article on the new hunters game oh okay be interested i mean i doubt that there's much more information but yeah, good for them. <laughs> I I don't think we're gonna do a video on it. Nah. It's they didn't give much away and it's not a big Unfortunately release. I'm just not like that excited about it, so And you know what? You're allowed to not make videos about stuff that you're not excited about. I know. You're not a slave to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Except for in the Schmodown. Sure. <laughs> uh, Bakey, thanks for the super chat. Have you ever heard of the Shockmaster? He was a professional professional wrestler in WCW in the 90s that wore a Stormtrooper mask covered in glitter. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen a gif of that, I think. I've seen that. I didn't know who or what that was. Huh. <clears throat> Interesting name, and then, like, using the helmet. I feel like he should have had the word Storm in his name, or Trooper, but... Helmet covered in glitter. <laughs> I don't I know how he'd be a, an effective wrestler with that thing on. You can't see anything in him. Yeah. Oh, I'm Hilo, and I'm here to say hi. You gonna pop up? Nope. You gonna be the boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wolfboy762, thanks for your super chat. These H. Hollywood re reporter interviews seem like the equivalent of infinity stones for Alex. I don't know what... Or maybe HR stands for something else. Oh, High Republic. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, High Republic. Yeah, I, I kind of. I just assumed Hollywood Reporter. Except but... there's only five of them. There's six Infinity Stones, right? But <laughs> yeah, I am trying to collect them all. Uh, maybe we'll have another one next week. I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe... I'm working on one. Uh, well, I'm working on two, and the next one might happen soon. Kilo. Don't chew on that. 
stop. He's 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 realized that he's been too good the past few streams, where he's like, I I gotta cause some chaos. People gotta remember I'm here. Yeah. I can't blame him. I guess. He needs to remind us that he's the star of the show. <laughs> we tried to put a little seat for him on here, and that didn't really work out. <laughs> <laughs> Kilo, stop. You've already chewed the thing off of that. Uh, let's see. James... James Alder, thank you for the generous super chat. Uh, question, do you think Palpatine was as successful of a Sith as other Sith Lords in the past? I guess we don't know exactly how... Uh... Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hilo. Come here, Hilo. Get down. Uh... He basically had others do his heavy lifting, and his empire barely lasted a couple decades with the Jedi all but extinct. I mean, he probably was as successful as, like, the, the last time there was a big Jedi purge. Uh, we, we don't know how successful the other Sith were, though, in canon. Like, we just keep getting these vague references to them. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I think Palpatine was just... Hilo, you gotta not chew on that. Stop. I think Palpatine was just a different breed of Sith. He was, like, basically the culmination of the rule of two. He's He was the, the master at the slow burn. Yeah, he was. He was the epitome of, like, okay, we're gonna be patient and sneaky instead of uh, just use brute force. So, yeah. I mean, I think... For for a new experiment for the Sith, I guess he did pretty well. But then I, he was also like the last Sith, so <laughs> yeah, he had he, he kind of he kind of ruined it for everybody. He had a lot to he had a lot to do, a lot on his plate to basically revamp the entire idea of the Sith. And but then like he he didn't really pass on all of his knowledge to Vader. Stop, stop, like his stop. his plan was to stop. always be the Sith. He wanted to be the final Sith. He, he is all the Sith. Right. He wanted. That's what he wanted. And then by not having an actual heir invader, it's like, well, the Sith are for real extinct now. <laughs> so in that uh, vein, like he really dropped the ball. Mm. He probably let Darth Bane down. Oh. <laughs> uh, another super chat from Big Starklighter. Uh, says, can you two switch roles for this stream? I, ugh. I don't think I would get done before like midnight if I had to build what he's building right now. Maybe if we get to like a really easy bag towards the end. We'll see. I don't know what this. <laughs> he he was like, I'm gonna bust out the Tupperware for this one for like the little tiny pieces. I don't know if it's helping me. <laughs> Oh. What's his deal? I don't know. I never know. He's normally so good. But now he just wants to play. <clears throat> um, Cully Ace 18 thanks for your super chat. I thought I was a big Star Wars fan before, but you guys make me want to explore so much more of what the galaxy far, far away has to offer. Love the great content. You guys are the best. Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, you were still a great fan before. Yeah. All fans are great fans <laughs> until they're not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, I think uh, Steel Saunders said this from Steel Wars. There's no wrong way to love Star Wars there's a wrong right. way to hate it <laughs> yes that's true sorry my phone is blowing up you just put it away your faction mates can live without you for 
an hour. But it's a it's a trivia question, but <laughs> <laughs> Back to it. What were we talking about? Oh, fans. All fans are great. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take that phone, chuck it out of here. I, I put it back there. I'm done. <clears throat> um, Bradley Walston, thanks for the super chat. Just wanted to say to thank you guys for all that you do, and I hope you guys are well. Also, please give the furry ones some pets for me. Well, at least we got video evidence of us petting Hilo. <laughs> oh, he heard his name and he's coming back. Why'd you say his name? How about more? How about more <laughs> pets for Hilo? <laughs> he literally was laying down over there and he's like, oh, they He was my staring name. at me though. He, he wasn't, he was waiting for an excuse to pop up. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry, Hilo. Wait, what's this? We got 350 viewers and only 139 likes. I mean, that's okay. I understand. <laughs> but if you hit that like button, Good things oh. happen to those who like videos. <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to run out of creative ways to ask people to like the video. <laughs> Got Hilo. this glare Stop. on the page that is like hard, hard I, to see past. I had that too when I was doing the Grogu Lego. It was a we're just, significant we're glare. Running out of space on this table. Uh, Caleb Nall, thanks for the super chats. Coming at you from my apartment's gym. Don't worry, staying <laughs> distant and safe. Were there any absolutely ripped Jedi like Goku ripped? <laughs> also, good for you uh, for working out. Um, there was like a ripped... This is Legends, but wasn't there like a ripped hut? No, Gracchus, Gracchus is not a Jedi, but he's oh. in canon and he's ripped. Uh, Kit Fisto. Oh, yeah. Kit Fisto. He looks good in those uh, Mon Cala arcs. Hilo. Hilo, you, you're killing me. Is this what you want? <laughs> I just wanted to show everyone my beautiful face. Give you a little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Lick all my makeup off. Good boy. Maybe it tastes delicious. And that's I, what he wants. I think it does. <laughs> Maybe. Oh my god, is that literally all he wanted? He, maybe. <laughs> it's like, and now I leave. <laughs> you Can you lay down? Just lay down. Um, Aaron Manning, thanks for the super chat. Did you see any of Charles Soule and Will Sliny. Sliny's stream earlier? He I did. He said some interesting things, and there was some cool art of Loden and Beldron. I watched most, well, I listened to most of it. I had it kind of on in the background while I was doing some work, so I wouldn't say that I was being super attentive, but I, I was there. And I popped into the chat a couple times. But yeah, that was uh, fun to listen to, at least. And and the art was cool, seeing Will work that fast. Basically off of, like, a a police sketch description. Mm -hmm. of I'm, I'm sure he's seen some of the art, but uh, Charles was just like, this is what Loden Greatstorm looks like. This is what Bell looks like. And then Will just drew it. It was fun. Yeah, I, I popped in while he was watching it, and... The art looked really good from what I saw. <clears throat> oh my gosh. What? This is like, this is just so much detail work. 
I was like, this bag doesn't look so rough. <laughs> then I'm, I turn the page, I'm like, oh no. And he did lay down, so I think all he wanted was a smooch. Uh, Super Princess Kai, thanks for the super chat. For you, which plot twist had has a bigger impact? Empire Strikes Back or Star Wars KOTOR? Or do you think both plot twists have the same level of impact? Well... I think I knew them both before, like... You know, you just everyone has heard Luke, I am your father, even though that's the wrong line. Like everyone knows that when you're growing up. So I didn't get to experience that fresh. Uh, and I knew the twist about KOTOR as well, because I don't know, back then just spoilers weren't really a thing. I don't, I wonder when that happened, when people were finally like respecting spoilers and stuff, but yeah, I, I didn't get to experience either of those as if, like, I had never heard them before. So I don't think I have a good answer. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't played KOTOR, so that one's a no for me. <laughs> probably Empire was a bigger twist, but I was very young and, and don't remember... I probably didn't know what a plot twist was when I saw it. There's that, too. <laughs> um, also, Aldo spamming the chat with asking us question uh if we've seen the finis and ferb yet no we have not still no sorry <laughs> sorry just life gets in the way um we will watch it at some point when we don't have to watch other stuff <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, what's up, Jane Dalton? Thanks for the super chat. Do y'all think Palpatine had a plan to kill Anakin if Anakin didn't turn to the dark side? Were there any powerful people who could have fought Anakin for him? Also, good luck Friday, Molly. Thank you. Huh. He probably... Uh, yeah, like, he always had... He's Mr. Backup plan, so... Do you I want to say yes. Do you think Palpatine himself could have killed him yeah maybe that was the plan yeah yeah i think palpatine could have killed him yeah I'm trying to think i mean he could have just slightly altered order 66 if anakin wasn't going to comply and put Anakin's list, name back on the list right. and ha had all the clones come after him, basically. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with Stuart uh, in the chat. Palpatine had a contingency plan for everything, so I'm sure he had, he had like a an uh-oh button somewhere <laughs> on his desk. Uh -huh. It, was, it just had like a sad face on it. <laughs> oh, My plan yeah. didn't work. I hate to use this. <laughs> Sleep of Giants uh, with another super chat. Blue Shadow Virus was a hoax. Uh -huh. <laughs> Man, that seems That's probably like... one of the Holonet tubers. <laughs> oh, yeah. That seems like so long ago. Was that season one? I don't or remember. Two? We're in season four now of our rewatch, and we're back to doing, or pre-recording videos talking about our Clone Wars rewatch. Yeah, yeah. the Mandalorian really uh, <laughs> slowed we, us down on that. We watched the Blue Shadow Virus, I think, when we were in the other house. I think that's true. So it had to have been season one. Goodman4, thanks so much for uh, two super chats in a row. Um, let's see, the first one says, would you guys like to see Beresafi or learn what happened to her in the Ahsoka series? If not, uh, then would you like to know in a comic or a game? I'm gonna... I, I definitely want to know what happened to her. It'd I'm, be... I'm gonna guess Bad Batch for now. Like. 
that's close enough in the timeline that it hasn't been. We we could find out what happened to her then. Yeah. It'd be crazy if she showed up in the Ahsoka series. I, I feel like they have too much going on to, to talk about already. I think that, I agree, yeah. For that series. But yeah, Bad Batch is a good point. She, excuse me, she could be, <laughs> she could be like, if they're gonna do multiple seasons or arcs, she could be like the big bad. Or maybe she would come back and help the Bad Batch somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think, she, I don't, she seemed, I don't know. I can't decide if she would have been, I think if if they were to say she became an Inquisitor, I'd be like, yeah, okay. But I could also see them going a different route with her. Hmm. She was like basically trying to warn the Republic in a way and the Jedi that they had lost their way. Uh, but she did it in a terrible manner. So I don't know. Like I can't decide if she, I, I'd be fine if they put her as an Inquisitor or if they didn't. <laughs> Uh, oh, and then they immediately had another super chat. Would you guys be interested in seeing a Star Wars anthology series that was based on the Marvel Comics series, What If Comics? So, like... like <laughs> we, get, we get this question a lot. Yeah, so like a What If series, but in Star Wars? Yep. I mean... I Yes, I would be up for it. I liked those old Legends comics. I don't think they're going to do it anytime soon. I think that they've been so concerned about their canon and not confusing newer fans. I think that would be too much right now for Lucasfilm to like take that dive. Yeah, it would be very confusing for fans. And I mean, it might also be confusing for Marvel fans, but I think they're they're making it very clear about what that show is, and Marvel al already is dealing with like alternate timelines yeah. and things like that. So they've already set up everything that needs to be set up for a what if series. So that would be a lot harder for Star Wars to do. I'd be down for it, but like I can just already see all the comments of like, is this episode canon? Like, no, it's a what if, but like every episode someone would ask, and it's like, no, that's not what this is. You know what would be cool if. Star Wars Visions, that whole like animated show where mm -hmm. each episode is done in a different art style, if that was literally a what if series, like every story or every episode was a different story in a different timeline. It might be. I mean, the name kind of works, but. Yeah. And like, they just are not following the current canon. I will. I, I would be down for it. I'll be pleasantly surprised if Lucasfilm goes for that at this current time. Yeah, that would be cool. But as of right now, it, I think it would be too hard to pull off amongst everything else that they're trying. They're trying to achieve. <clears throat> Spoons o tunes. Uh, thanks for the super chat. If you mess up the mandibles, they will droop forever. Happened to my falcon, oh, and it can't be fixed without taking the section apart. Oh boy. Well, we haven't gotten to those yet, so. Uh... That's what I'm building right now. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> well, don't mess up. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Big pressure. Under pressure. Good boy, Hilo. He keeps like getting up, wandering around, and then laying back down. Uh, but since we've gotten a little bit caught up, I'll go back to um, Jane's comment when she said good luck f for Friday. Friday is my Schmodown match against Laura Kelly. 
Um, and it's a number one contender match, so whoever wins between the two of us will go on to play Alex, potentially to win the belt. Or I think I think well, that's how it's going to work. Or there's a there's still potential for it's a three way up match. To me. Yeah, it's all up to Alex whether or not he wants to play us separately or as a th as a triple threat. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I feel pretty good. You're ready. Feel pretty confident. I'm loving the dungeon so far. That's that's my the faction that I'm on. For anyone who doesn't know what Schmodown is, uh, yeah, I'm excited. You're ready. I I have terrible like nervous anxiety every time I have to do a match, but my confidence in myself is at least getting better. <laughs> I can't decide if the Tupperware was a good idea or not. <laughs> uh, B. Kenobi, thanks for the generous super chat. Barris story idea. During Order 66, she's attacked in prison but breaks out, sees the temple burning, then Sorta redeems herself by evacuating a bunch of younglings before being killed by Anakin slash Vader. You mm. two are amazing. Oh, thanks. Maybe she is who saved Grogu. Maybe. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. Like that, people keep saying like, well, we see Grogu in the Bad Batch. And I'm like, I hope not. I don't want that. But if they were to make it part of like an actual character's story and like give it some this is why we're showing you grogu in the bad batch i'd be like okay yeah <laughs> i'm on board do you think we'll get an animated grogu no i don't think grogu is going to be in the bad batch i mean we, we might at some point but oh sure maybe but not, not right away Uh, Rod Films, thanks for the super chat. If you were given the chance to write a trilogy taking place ap after episode 9, what would your beginning, middle, and end be? Thanks for the streams. Uh, oof. Well, I've said it before, uh, and the holiday special confirmed it. I want Rey to train Finn to be a Jedi. I want Janna to have a part Maybe Janna and Lando go off on a quest of some kind to find Janna's family or something like that. But I'm trying to think of like who the big bad would be. See, I that's why I would not touch any of that stuff. I would jump hundreds of years into the future. I'd set there. There's some new baddie. It's not the Sith. It's something new. Mm -hmm. Could still be dark side users, but someone, maybe a, a new force dyad, maybe it's like a brother and sister pair. Somebody is called to Tatooine. They retrieve the lightsabers. Like that's their calling. That's the start of their quest is like, they get these, the blades of the heroes past. And it would be kind of fun to like have a meta side of, Maybe they get the lightsabers, they know they can use the force, and then they go to whatever the Jedi are at this point in time, and maybe the maybe the Jedi are like upset that they get Luke and Leia's lightsabers. They're like, What did you do to earn this? Like <laughs> <laughs> You didn't train for it. Meh. I just found them. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know that we'll be getting anything like directly after episode nine. I honestly... I, I don't think they should. Like, books, comics, yes. Movies, I say do something totally different. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's, it's so hard for me to think of an idea for a Star Wars trilogy without making it too close to what they've already done. Oh, that's what that is. 
I'll, I'll just say a trilogy all about Tamiri Blag and his force, force sensitivity. And his broom. And his broom. Broom boy. <clears throat> Rick Villanueva, thanks for the super chat. Hey guys, thanks for keeping me company while I cook. Prosciutto ganache tonight. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, thoughts on Hunters or the Boba comic story coming? So we talked a little mm. bit about Hunters. We, we've talked about both of them, but we can we'll touch on it again. Yeah. Um, uh, a big meh on Hunters. I'll say that. It's, yeah, I'm perfectly fine to give it a shot, but it doesn't seem like it's my thing, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but it, it just seems like you know a small release that's not going to make huge waves but who knows maybe i'll be proven wrong mm -hmm. be fine with that um war of the bounty hunters i'm more excited about <laughs> i'll always be more excited for like story content over uh just like a a shooter game that probably isn't going to get into story or anything very much did, I know you, did you did, do a video on the Boba comic? Mm hmm Well, I didn't watch it. What, what's it going to be about? <laughs> uh, Boba Fett loses Han Solo on the way to Jabba's palace and has to get him back. Okay, so yeah, we touched on that earlier. I, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I'm just going to smile and nod. <laughs> that sounds like... An interesting story, more interesting than... It's very similar to Shadows of the Empire. Mm-hmm. And I'm down for that. But that that's like Boba Fett's side of the Shadows of the Empire story was the other bounty hunters try to take Han Solo from him. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, Michael T, thanks for the super chat. I subscribed to your channel right after Rogue One and have watched literally every video since. Oh. Just wanted to say hello. That was that's a long time. That is, uh, yeah, thank you, Michael. That is a long time. <laughs> that was what twenty seventeen. Uh, well, that's a trivia question. You should know that. Twenty seventeen. What year did Rogue One come out? No, twenty sixteen. I am not in study mode right now. Well. I can turn it on and off, and I have turned it off. <laughs> and I have turned it off. <laughs> oh, uh, Michelle Cobb with a, another generous super chat. You guys are killing it tonight. Uh, it says, you touched on part one of a friendly debate. Palpy, Palpy, <laughs> <laughs> Palpy would have become, sorry, let me start. Palpy would have become the emperor without Anakin. So part two, the fulfillment of the Chosen One prophecy wasn't Anakin falling to the dark side, but Vader returning to the light. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Yes, that that sounds right. That's that's how when Yoda says misread the prophecy could have been. Uh, I do indeed think it was. Very much misread, misinterpreted. I oh man, that line annoys me so much. <laughs> Just like, why did you introduce this prophecy idea and then all of a sudden say misread it could have been and then never bring it up again? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but that that all stems from my dislike of the chosen one trope. See, I just I said the wrong year to throw you guys off. <laughs> Sorry, I was just okay. Just a heads <laughs> up: we're about halfway through this bag. What time is it? Uh, it is seven, almost seven thirty. Okay, great. For some reason, I thought that took two hours. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Oh no!" Okay, good. <laughs> I've I've built one of these things that's gonna become the mandible. Where's that gonna go? Oh, right there. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
Yeah, I mean, Michelle, I think you nailed it with that Chosen One prophecy being more about Vader returning to the light. Mm -hmm. Jane Dalton with another super chat. Uh, did y'all think Ryan Johnson's comments about Ray and Ben's relationship being romantic was obvious and self-evident or somewhat new information specific specifically for The Last Jedi? I didn't read exactly what he said. I also did not. Um, <laughs> We're bad Star Wars <laughs> people. I just like, I don't know. <laughs> There's certain things where I'm like, okay, I'm just not gonna, I'll wait. I'll wait to read all this. Uh when I see people arguing about it already. Uh, I mean, so he said, I was... He said it was meant to be romantic? Yes, that he was going for, like, romantic undertones. And I'm like, yeah, I think I buy that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, well, I mean, I think I got that in the movie, where I know when I was, like, first learning what Raylo was before The Last Jedi came out, I was like, no way, that's not what's happening. And then watching The Last Jedi and they start to like have this bond through the force and then they're fighting together in the throne room. I was like, okay, yeah, like I buy that it, I wasn't on the same page of like, yes, they are like, both madly in love with each other right now but i was like okay i buy that this might be the end game mm. yeah i feel the same way i'm i wasn't technically shipping the two of them as as hard as people who consider themselves raylos but i feel like the relation the potential relationship there was fairly obvious um we all know, know about the thigh grab. I mean, <laughs> come on. But their little moment in the hut where Luke finds them and, like, basically is like, you stop that. Yeah. You stop cut, that right now. Cut it out. Cut it out. Like, no. Boop. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> um, that was, like, a big moment for the two of them. And also when... Yeah, the throne room scene is over, and Ray just, I mean, she's still, she's still kind of naive at this point, uh, still growing as a, as a person, as a character. She immediately is like, we have to save the fleet. She thinks Kylo is, like, on her side now, but then that's when he does his whole spiel about let old things die, join me, and she's like, what? No, what? That's, I'll say, I really, really love the whole, like, when they're in the elevator and they're saying, I saw your future and you're going to join me. And they both assume that, like, yeah, they they probably saw each other fighting together or something. And Ben thinks, great, she's going to come to the dark side. Mm -hmm. And she's like, great, Ben's going to come back to the light side yeah they, they i like that they both have the wrong assumption they both misread their inner prophecies <laughs> which is something like uh, claudia gray's master and apprentice book goes into prophecies and how like you know you interpret these things and it's the same i and that's a whole like i think meta commentary on storytelling is that you go into these stories you go into the dark side cave with whatever you bring with you your own history so everyone's going yeah. to, to interpret this stuff differently uh anyway i'm just like rambling now <laughs> <laughs> well i i love that line about uh, you go into the cave with whatever you take with you mm -hmm. that's just like whatever your baggage is whatever mm -hmm. your problems are your inner demons your uh, troubles whatever you want to call it that's I'm what's, just vibing over here, nodding. Like, uh, mm -hmm, yep, mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what's going to be in there showing you basically like, okay, this is what you personally have to go through and deal with. And for Luke, it was he had to confront Vader. My phone is still blowing up. <laughs> I'm going to check it real quick. Oh my god. 
We'll ask the next question while you... <laughs> uh, oh, well, it's not a question, but... Olivia Pirano, thanks for the super chat. Can't stay tonight, but just wanted to say hi. Hope y'all are having a good week. Here's a money. Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> Wanna ask, ask the next question? I will. Well, I'm, I need something to talk about while you talk to your Schmodown I'm not, friends. I'm just reading. I'm making sure that... They're okay? <laughs> that it's They're like, not Molly's not answering our trivia questions. Molly, are you okay? Do you I, need help? I'm making sure it's not urgent. <laughs> What's the most urgent trivia question you can think of? Well, no, I could be like, uh, Friday's no good, we gotta do it tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. I've had less than a glass of wine, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, oh, another one from Michelle Cobb. Thanks so much, Michelle. Uh, I feel like Michelle and Jane are vibing in the chat and having some really good insights. Uh, if Palpatine used the Force to make Anakin and Rey's father, does that make Rey and Ben first cousins once removed? <laughs> uh, I don't think he used the Force to make Rey's father. Rey's father was a clone. That's from oh the boy, novelization? Here we go. Uh-huh. Take a big swig first before we get into this. Yeah, so in the movie, as far as the movie's concerned, Ray's father is just Palpatine's son. And then the novelization said that... Is this, yeah, this is right. Uh, the novelization said that uh, he was a failed clone of Palpatine, a failed non-Force-sensitive clone of Palpatine. So I believe that Ray's father was... Cloned, not created strictly through using the Force. And also, the idea, does it say that Palpatine created Anakin? That's not canon. Yeah, use canon. the Force to... Uh, in fact, a lot of... This is weird. Like, uh, a lot of Lucasfilm people have said, like, no, that's not the case. And it absolutely was something that lucas tossed around and even put into uh one of the drafts of revenge of the sith at one point but then i guess took it back but the fact that lucasfilm people are saying that palpatine did not create anakin makes me think that lucas decided nope i don't want i don't like that like he threw around the idea and he said no i don't want to do that Mm -hmm. because so many other times when things have come up uh charles soul talked about this today on his live stream because someone asked if he would get into luke creating the green lightsaber and he said well there's a deleted scene of luke building his lightsaber in return of the jedi and while it was deleted it, it had lucas's hand in it lucas did that mm -hmm. and he took it out but they, they want to honor the things that Lucas wrote. So I, I have to imagine that instead of them just deciding, no, this one thing is not true, I, I think Lucas probably said, uh, I don't like the idea that Anakin was created by Palpatine anymore, and he took it out of the movie for a reason. But I don't really know. Um, just my thoughts. <laughs> is that your TED Talk? This is my TED Talk. For the, for the night? Yeah. Pal Palpatine's just too powerful. He can't cheat death the way that he did and use the force to make Anakin raise father. <laughs> Although I will say if you if you have that head cannon right now, like which there's you're, nothing which you're allowed to have. Right, there's nothing to refute it, so that's fine. Mm. That's just my thoughts based on what I've seen. Yeah. Uh, oh, and another one from Jane Dalton. Um, which conflict would you rather see in a new trilogy after episode 9? A slave rev revolution, droid revolution, dark side users, another civil war like the Clone Wars. 
Droid Revolution is interesting because that's one that they've certainly been dabbling with. And also the droids aren't wrong. So yeah, there might be, or there definitely will be some droids who uh, probably do some terrible things yeah. to fight for their freedom. But it's also like, okay, but they're not wrong. <laughs> I would, I would want to bring L3 back if that were the case. I found my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so I like Droid Revolution. That feels uh, different, but also like, you know, they've been building to this to some degree. Yeah, and like you could tie Lando into that a little bit if, I mean, if Billy D. Williams wanted to <laughs> be in more Star Wars movies, which I don't know if he does, but. I mean, sounds like he wants to be in a disney plus show so mm. yeah i'm gonna say uh, i want more dark side users <laughs> just because i think it's cool i i was so excited for for dark side ray even though i knew that wasn't going to amount to much i i pretty much knew that that was a vision but i remember being like nah no way that's a vision like, <laughs> I just remember thinking it would be so disappointing if they put that out in the marketing and then it just wound up being a vision. And then it was a vision. You thought it was going to be real? That we talked Ray about would have yeah, a we twin? Talk no, no. I thought that Ray might follow the dark side. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Now, now we're actually halfway through this bag. I was wrong earlier. Mm. And let's see how this works yeah i i don't know what it would be about but i think just i'm so excited for the acolyte i want more dark side stuff to happen yeah you're gonna get plenty of dark side stuff so make sure it's on there solidly alex is doing the the, the mandible all right i think i think this is gonna be a mandible that does not sag. Oh, and she also said, Molly, when you win, will you move the belt? Absolutely. I will take this belt and well, put it we in my Well, we were talking office. about moving it from that shelf to, like, over on her side when we do Q&As. But then you'll, I'm sure you'll have a spot on your own background as well. <laughs> yes, I will have it in my background. And maybe when we film videos in here, I'll just put it over my shoulder. <laughs> People will be like, what the heck is that? Uh, Stephen Ray Morris, thanks so much for the super chat. Love you guys. Is there a planet you would love to see revisited in a different era? Jetta. Seeing, seeing <laughs> Naboo in the High Republic era was so cool. So, what did you say? Jetta. Jetta, yeah. Jetta would be really cool to see like all the statues up upright and... And I like how they walk and talk. They seem very chill. Okay, I think I did that right. Doesn't look like it's gonna sag. And now it's just in my way. <laughs> <laughs> you can rotate it so it's pointing that way, maybe. We're just, we're gonna figure this out as we go. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Rick Villanueva, thanks for the super chat. What are you expecting from Blue Bantha's AI Solo 2 script? Great job with episode 10. I know a little bit about it. You do? <laughs> yeah. I I mean I, I accept nothing or I expect nothing but chaos after <laughs> episode 10. Matt has sent me a handful of very strange stuff. Oh man. Like Alex all, with they're, the they're inside a, scoop. It feels like it did really well in bringing characters that make sense to be there. Like, yeah, Infus Nest is there, but some of the lines she has are hilarious. Like, just like, why would she say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I hope to see? I mean, I hope it's, yeah, just I, chaos. I hope Maul is in it more with like a bunch of weird roles and lines. Um. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> I hope all three 
has an actual romantic relationship with Lando. <laughs> As a ship? I mean, it's possible. Well, I get like, who knows what the AI is going to do? It yeah, could, it could bring her back to life. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. It would bring her back to life because I don't know how, how well the AI would understand. Well, I mean, there is the line. She's part of the ship now, mm -hmm. but who knows? Yeah. I'm convinced that thing uses Google because <laughs> Just... I don't know how it brought Zero the Hut into into episode 10. <laughs> If that doesn't convince you to watch it, I don't know what will. <laughs> Did wait, was it was was he just mentioned or Yeah. Okay. I was like, I don't remember that. Oh man. Solo two, what else? Uh well we we'd probably be going to Tatooine. So we'd probably get Jabba. That makes sense. Hmm. May I don't maybe Chewie would have more to do. <laughs> don't know. Ooh, uh Caleb Nall with another super chat saying Making spicy Mando stew. Caleb has been uh, kicking our butts at the uh, cookbook. <laughs> Caleb's been cooking his way through it. How is that kicking our butts? Because we haven't made anything except port in a storm. We ha Well, first, that drink is important. I know. It's important. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> and we, we just, we, we don't have time to cook. In fact, I'm I'm realizing now that I was gonna make that soup, yep. and but we've got we've got a little bit of leftovers from last night, and we always have our we have two emergency frozen pizzas in the freezer, so <laughs> maybe we'll bust. That's them. our yeah our Fridays or our Fridays our Wednesdays <laughs> are pretty chaotic. Yeah, we try to do a lot of our filming on Wednesdays, and then we do this, and then. Sometimes I'll have a show to do afterwards and you will stream. I do my stream. Yeah. I believe we are caught up on Super Chats. Hell yeah. That's like the first time that's happened uh, this <laughs> early in the stream. Now I'm trying to remember some of the... Did you want trivia questions or no? I, I mean, yeah. Where you landed on that? People. People, if... people can send Molly some trivia questions. Movie trivia only. Movie trivia only. That's always the. Maybe I'll whisper my answer to Alex and. <laughs> and I can just say whether or not you're right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I, I've been told not to show my cards, and I'm still. Is that what is that what everyone's texting you about? No, is no, Kaiser no, no. like, don't you dare answer any trivia on stream? No. That'd be funny. <laughs> or I could I could do the answering, and you can just mentally know whether or not you got it right or not. Now she's back on her phone. I'm confirming some stuff. Uh huh. I've got important things to talk about. <laughs> the good part about being halfway through this bag is that, like there's so many small details in this bag and I was having trouble keeping up, but now I can find what I need faster. Sorry. Um. Recite Jedi Rocks? Mm. <laughs> 
Ooh, titty, man. No, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. If that if that becomes a Schmedon question, that will be the day I retire. <laughs> <laughs> Just get up and leave. I'm this, done. I, I this isn't worth it anymore. <laughs> that that's the test of like who's the most dedicated to trivia though. Are you willing to memorize Lopty Neck or, okay, so or Jedi Rocks? Or? Here's something that actually was brought up by my faction mate Ben Bateman. Um, on what was it SEN? No, it was backstage. Um, oh, right. He was talking with PJ about how, because like some people have said that he just will go on IMDb and try to memorize stuff, but I mean that's out. That's absolutely not the case. He loves watching movies. Um, I think the argument was that they. The fans wanted more plot-oriented questions, but his argument was like, you can't wa just sit down and watch every movie that has ever been made. Like, you. It's, I mean, that's it's, true, but it can't be done. That's the that's the thing. I mean, even in a Star Wars showdown, where you can watch all twelve movies countless times. Well, that's why Star Wars is the hardest division. <laughs> Or the but, most competitive. But, like, that's just, you know, you're going to get an, unlock, an unlucky question sometimes that you just don't know. And that's, yeah, you're going to get a question about a movie you haven't seen. Like, that's the game. Yeah. But, like, so he, he was just talking about his love for movies and watching movies and the fact that he will watch a movie every day because he loves watching movies. And it's like, well... Take a look at the Star Wars division and what it's become at this point. Like, we have a certain set of movies that we just have to watch over and over and over and pick pick it apart. Uh-huh. Which is, like, kind of what we do for a job already, but... Eh. No, we don't pick it apart. No, we, we don't pick it apart, but, like... When, in the early days and the Star Wars Minute days, it was like sure. we would concentrate more on just background characters mm -hmm. and like the history of this and the history of this species, wh whatever. But I don't know. There's there's a lot of surface level Star Wars movie knowledge, and then there's like you had to have read this Wikipedia article or looked this up in a book or just like had the action figure blah 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 and that's I don't know it, it's it's starting to feel more and more like okay Star Wars is getting to the point where you're just having to memorize stuff yeah Especially when it comes to numbers and people on screen and how many this and how many that. It's just like... Uh, it's, yeah, I agree. I agree. But, you know, I, I love the, the question writers and they're doing a great job. They're doing as best as they can for Star Wars, having to figure out new questions for Star Wars, which is going to be insane this year because they're saying... Like one match a week. A Star Wars match a week for, you know, like the, the rookies and all that. And then we're going to have, I think, two tournaments, at least one Star Wars tournament. Um, that's a lot of Star Wars questions. Yeah. And like, it's it's just going to be hard to for them to figure out new trivia questions and you know I don't think any player likes to have to challenge something that's like another thing that the Star Wars division has gotten a lot of flack for oh all the pedantic challenges uh -huh. well that's that's kind of what it's turning into that's what it's turning into that's what it's coming down to um, in certain cases like more and more people are both playing perfect games and then you'll get a question and someone will challenge 
that this one little thing about it isn't right or one person is more right than the other and then that's what will win you the game. It's it's exhausting to think about, but <laughs> it's also just like well, I mean, they've talked about expanding it into, like, the Mandalorian or the Clone Wars and stuff, which, um, like, I can see why they would want to do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm also like, all right, well, I guess I'll just never lose that belt, whatever. <laughs> if Thomas is in the chat, he's like, oh, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Um, I mean, if they expanded it into the Clone Wars show, that would be such a... Ugh, that would be such a pain to have to go back through and and study all of it (laughs) all of it anyways i've i've blabbed on enough can you tell molly's mind is on the schmodown yeah i mean it has been ever since i joined pov um and i I have had so much fun reacting and playing along to the regular matches that I forget how competitive the Star Wars stuff is. <clears throat> I'm seeing, uh, so Ian Joseph, uh, is this not how it's always been? What's changed? I mean, I can remember the first couple of matches that Alex did. People were just having fun, and the questions were like... That's <laughs> that's the big thing that's changed. It's like the intensity level is like... I mean, I'm, I'm committed to being there and being like, I'm here to have fun. And I love the way Joseph Scrimshaw puts it, is that like... I'm here to say the word cahoons and have people applaud for me. Like, it's the only place that can happen. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what I feel like it's about. It's like, let's just be nerds. Someone will win. Mm-hmm. I, I Yes, I want to win, but it's not the end of the world if I don't. But it's also like, people expect you to, to play a perfect game. And if you're not playing a perfect game, you're pr- like probably going to lose when it comes to like getting closer and closer to playing someone for the belt like if you miss a question it almost feels like all right well that's it it's over and that's not how it used to be yeah so i don't know (laughs) what's pov you say reef Uh ton Um, that's the show that I do about the Schmodown. It's called A Certain Point of View, and it's fantastic. And if you like the Schmodown, you should subscribe. All right, back to Super Chats. Um, On the Brick, thanks for the Super Chat. Will you watch Perseverance Land tomorrow? What is that? I have no idea what that is. Perseverance Land? Hmm. Is that something we can do on Explain It To Me? (laughs) Um, Yeah, someone let me know what Perseverance Land is. (laughs) And I will get back to that. Let's see. Uh, Oh, Jane Dalton, what is the number of the docking bay the Millennium Falcon is in on Tatooine in A New Hope? That would be Docking Bay 94. Don't mind me, just breaking stuff. Don't break stuff! <laughs> Jedi Mullet 77, <laughs> thanks for the super chat. Alex, you're not programming the computer on the Falcon there to cheat on the emission test, are you? <laughs> well, yeah, Do you we- think they have emissions in Star Wars? No. The Falcon would have failed. The at Night every Buzzard time. would have failed. Oh, for sure. It's like spewing black smoke. <laughs> but I don't think they really care about following the rules. Mm. They're Knights of Ren. Oh, people are saying a rover or something landing on Mars. Oh. Mars cool. rover yeah, set. I, I hadn't heard about that at all. 
Mars rover is set to land on Earth. The Perseverance is the Mars rover set to land on Mars tomorrow. Uh, real world news usually I th flies <laughs> right over my head. I, but that does sound cool. I bet Hello Greedo's gonna stream it or something. He or, or talk about it. He loves that stuff. Did, oh, I haven't watched it yet, but he did a video on the Star Wars kid and like the first Star Wars video to go viral, and I was uh -huh. like, "That's amazing!" I I have it on my to watch list. That would be like a dream interview, <laughs> but I he understandably does not want to talk about that. Uh, Chris Fields, thanks for the super chat. Trivia, what did Yoda find under the big log? <laughs> he rolled over, and what were his thoughts on it? Oh, is that... That's from the song. Uh-huh. Is it just a smaller log? I think a stick. A stick? Or maybe he does say a small log. And he, that log had a child. That log had a child. <laughs> <laughs> The, what a renaissance that song has gotten on this channel the past couple weeks. It's a great song. But yeah, I love it. Oh, every Warwick Davis character, I I know them. Oh, you can I'm do not that. going. I'm not going to name them. What? All right. Wow. That's giving away too much. Mm. Seems like she doesn't know. I don't think you could name everyone he did in solo oh. alone. You're probably right. Guys, Google how many cameos Warwick Davis had in Solo and get back to me on that list. <laughs> Touche, Molly. <laughs> Touche. Another super chat from Michelle Cobb. Pick a Jedi, any Jedi, versus River Tam from Firefly. Who mm. wins? Versus Buffy, who wins? versus Gandalf, white or gray, who wins? And in a battle royale of all four, who wins? And why is it Buffy? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think Gandalf would win a fight against a Jedi or a Sith. I mean, the Force is magic-like, but it doesn't make you... Uh, it doesn't make you a straight-up demigod. <laughs> and that's what Gandalf the White was. This is when we need uh, Ashton here. Yeah, because I don't know the... Uh, the Astari, or the wizards, <laughs> of uh, Middle-earth were basically angels. I, I don't know the amount of what Gandalf can actually do magically. So, so okay, let's start with River Tam. God, it's been so long. I since know it's been a long I've time since Firefly. I've seen Firefly. Or but Serenity. she she's basically like a mechani mechanized. She's not mechanized. Or a like a, a Bra like a brainwashed. You'd say the trigger word and warrior. Yeah. Um. She doesn't have a lightsaber. <laughs> or the ability to use the force. I say she loses that one. Buffy. I, I'm interested to hear how you talk your way out of this one. You know what? I'm gonna say Buffy could potentially win if we're talking the finale of season four mm. and we do that. Yeah, when she is like crazy magic she, powered. She like, they do that spell and she basically evokes the power of all the she's like i am all the jedi yeah. i am all the slayers uh, she she invokes the power of the like original slayer uh, yeah basically she she does the matrix move she stops bullets with her she, hand she turns a rocket into a dove like that is straight up magic so yeah. if that's the case season then four, yeah i can i can see her beating a jedi season 4 finale buffy can absolutely beat any jedi in a fight i'm going to say that is that's canon. <laughs> um, and then Gandalf. You you think Gandalf would win? Gandalf's a demigod. Yeah, but he gets tired. 
And do Gandalf the Grey does. I mean, well, Gandalf the White can also be killed, but like, then the powers that be can just send him back. <laughs> Um, Braxton in chat said, Gandalf is a bad wizard. He does, like, no wizard things. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> the Ashton, our friend, once said, I'd be a bad Gandalf. No, he said he'd be bad Elrond. That's I'd be ba bad Elrond. Because of... Alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or because he he just accepts when... He would have Mary kicked and Mary Pippin. and Pippin out of the meeting. Yeah. You're right, though. Gandalf doesn't do he, yeah, a crazy did, amount of wizard stuff. He, he did fight he, a Balrog, that's he, fair. Yeah. He does crazy wizard stuff when he has to. What happened in that Balrog fight? Because that's after that was when he From became... From the lowest dungeon to the highest peak. Because <laughs> after that, that's when he became Gandalf the White, correct? Right. Did he die and become reborn? Yes. So did he actually defeat the Balrog? Yes. Oh. I guess... So he died... He, but he it. still died, yeah. Would he have become Gandalf the White had he not died in a courageous way? That's a question for Ashton. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I guess his spirit had to leave his body. But, like, when he comes back and he's like, I am Saruman, like... He kind of, sort of is. He is mm -hmm. Saruman as he should have been. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what he says, but like... Yeah, because he becomes Gandalf the White. And the books, Saruman beca becomes Saruman the Multicolored mm -hmm. or, or something. Uh, but I think that... They took is... that out of the movie. That sounds like something made up. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of it was, so... Oh, people want to know what my what's on my shirt. It's a it's a guy punching a bear. <laughs> Just cuz That's going to be me on Friday. Is Laura the bear? <laughs> no, the bear is my anxiety. <laughs> okay. At what point am I going to connect? Um, I'm and feeling then, some anxiety about the way this is going. And then in a battle royale, who wins and why is it Buffy? Well, yes, I explained if it's... <laughs> if it's that level of Buffy, then yeah, I'm on. I agree. I also... I, I feel like kind of a bad Buffy fan, the fact that I haven't read all the comics, but I just don't do well having to keep up with comics i i forget that they're out and i don't i don't know what kind of stuff she's gotten into in the comics as far as her powers go <clears throat> i think willow could beat everyone including buffy because she almost did <laughs> um and Chris Fields, thanks for the super chat. Real world trivia. I have work on the Perseverance rover and the rocket that launched it. Wow. Here's another money. Oh. That's awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. Got a rocket, a literal rocket scientist <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> what time is it? 8.06. Oh, okay, great. Again, like, I keep thinking we're... I, Molly's got, got a mock schmodown to do tonight, and... Uh, I'm well, like, I wasn't going to announce that to the world. Oh, well. Molly's <laughs> got nothing of import to do tonight. <laughs> That's what people are messaging me about. Um, I'm just trying to be aware of your schedule. <laughs> oh. I think 
I messed something up. Uh-oh. Wait, what am I supposed to do with this? How does this work? No. Oh, no. Wait. No. Wait. <laughs> no, this is fine. No. Wait. Wait. But I think I messed something up on the first half. Oh, boy. Not messed it up. I think I just forgot to do something, and I can probably fix it. <clears throat> Braxton said Jesus couldn't beat the Romans. <laughs> Brian Bailey said it's that time of night. I don't know what that means. Is that, does that, is that when Alex is like, wait, did I, wait, <laughs> hold on, wait. Wait, did I, huh? Oh, no, it's just the time of night probably where I realized that I did something wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna go fix it right now. Yep, there it is. Yeah, he plays at least six people. Oh, sorry, Warwick Davis plays at least six different roles in solo, but most of them are unnamed. So that would not be a trivia question. <laughs> Oh, Rain Man coming in with the real questions. Where is SFC Pruitt? Oh no. <laughs> is he okay? Is he alright? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, glad I fixed that. And that made me see something else that I messed up. Um, Callum asks, do we think Avar and Elzar will get together in the High Republic? I ship it. Yeah? I liked it. I don't... I mean... I could see it happening. We've we've definitely talked about this and the potential of this happening multiple times. Just because the Jedi of the High Republic are a lot less strict. Even though they had the conversation of basically being like, we can't let this go any further. Love conquers all. Uh, we'll see what what happens. <laughs> oh no, Sleep of Giants says he was eaten by turtles. No! <laughs> the turtles turned! It's like that Grizzly Man documentary. <laughs> he went to live among them. Oh, that documentary is very good and very... I have not seen it and I will not. It's so good and so disturbing at the same time. Ugh. I had to. I wrote a paper on it in college, comparing it to a, stor a story, and I can't remember what story it was now. Was it Dante's Inferno? No. Odd paper. Yeah. Although I haven't seen the movie, so. Darth Snow, thanks for the super chat, says, hey, what's up? <laughs> thanks, Darth Snow. What's up with you? We're just building this Lego. Lego set. Just chillin'. If you got any trivia, throw it my way. Uh, <laughs> Ian Joseph, are Kiati Mundi's wives canon? That's a good <laughs> question, actually. Uh, no, I don't think so. I haven't heard any mention of them, at least. Or the fact that he was allowed to marry or anything like that. So I'm going to guess no. <laughs> oh, Admiral Akbar, the documentary is called Grizzly Man. Grizzly Man. 
Reef Ton said, here, Molly, catch the trivia. I don't... Are you talking about Drew Downs' question of uh, who is the toughest female character in Star Wars? The toughest? Phasma? Bo-Katan? Although Phasma's been through a lot. Yeah. If you read her book, you, you might agree that Phasma's pretty dang tough. Um, I don't know much about Darth Talon, except for that she needs more clothes. <laughs> She's probably cold. <laughs> Have you <laughs> seen some of the stuff that, like, George Lucas apparently loves that character. <laughs> because, he, you he know would... why? Because it would sell a crap ton of toys and <laughs> get him a crap ton of money. Oh yeah, the ninth sister is swole AF. Says, That's true. Says Dingbat. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Although, she did get beat. Well, so did Phasma. Yeah. Phasma's not tough in the movies, but she's tough in the books. Yeah. Would you rather face the ninth sister or Phasma? Uh, Phasma, because I would lay down my weapons and ask to to be her friend. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I'd rather... I think the ninth sister is tougher. I'd be more scared to face the ninth sister. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> Sleep of Giants with a, another super chat says, just got to the sticker sheet on my throne room <laughs> kit. Ooh. Oh my Sorry. gosh. Sorry. Rude. Alex is literally incapable of sneezing quietly. <laughs> Sleep of Giants said, just got to the sticker sheet on my throne room kit. Molly put them on for me. I <laughs> wish I could. I love stickers. Are there any stickers for this? Yeah. You've been putting them on occasionally. Oh, yeah. Not, no. not today specifically, but... I need... Lego with more stickers. <laughs> I don't know where Hilo is, but I just heard him do Sounds like Sounds like a, he's in our room and oh, he just bork. a little tiny bork. He's just like bork. Someone says that you have a dad sneeze. <laughs> is that <laughs> Just like a scream. I got that from my mom. She screams when she's just like, bah! I hate. I, d d no. There is no way that you cannot take it down a notch and not be loud while sneezing. I'm sorry. Sometimes they just come out of nowhere. I mean. Cover your whole face if you scream. Sometimes they come out of nowhere. There's no time, Molly. No. no. I. You know what's. You know what's the worst is when you do it in public. Now with the masks and everything. <laughs> and it goes. Bruh. No, when you do it in public and uh -huh. it's really loud and everybody looks around like, COVID. Bah. <laughs> no, I mean that. That's not what happens. But now, like, if you sneeze in public. Even if you have a mask on, people are like, away, beast! <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair, because, like, now we all kind of know how far water droplets from sneezes can go, and it's disgusting. <laughs> Ooh, I read an article, this was a long time ago, but it was like, why the act of blowing out candles on birthday cakes is disgusting and will never come back after Wasn't the pandemic. Wasn't that like a week ago? After the pandemic. Well, that was more than a week ago. But it made so much sense. It's like, yeah, it, if someone blows out the candles on a birthday cake, their spit is all over that cake. No wonder kids are always getting sick. 
Weird rant, but okay. <laughs> I like how you call yourself out. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay, Molly. Weird flex. Oh, what's up, John Booze? Thanks for the super chat. Do you think Ahsoka will eventually connect back up with the daughter? Or will we just get more lurking owl vibes? Yeah, it I... feels like something we need to follow up on at some point. It does. We, yeah, the the convor, convor, is that right? Uh-huh. Con yeah. The convor is such a mystery. And that whole arc of the daughter was also like very weird, but also really cool. Um, I do hope we get that explained a little bit more. And I honestly, I think it probably won't get explained to us until Dave Filoni is ready to write a death story for Ahsoka. Yeah, I think that's maybe Ahsoka's end game. Yeah. But I do think we'll learn more about it at some point. No droopy mandibles here. <laughs> um, got another one from Michelle Cobb. Thanks so much for the super chat, guys. Uh, oh, everyone who's been giving super chats tonight. It's been- uh, This is so many extra pieces. <laughs> every time. It's been very generous of you guys. Uh, but that's it. We finished bag six. Is there even a remote possibility that if Ezra shows up in live action Ahsoka, we will see him talk to Force Ghost Freddie Prince Jr.? <laughs> so Force Ghost Kanan. Yeah. Um, oh, but oh, but would Freddie Prince Jr. play Kanan? No, they I wouldn't do so. that. That'd be crazy. But it would be cool. But it would be crazy. Okay, I see some of the stuff already that I missed. <laughs> There's just so much detail on this set that you can't catch everything. It's impossible. Um, and the fact, the idea of a possibility that Ezra shows up in live action, I think it's pretty possible. If we're gonna get a, if we're gonna get Thrawn, I have to imagine we're gonna get Ezra. What do you think? I can see it happening. I'm not banking on it, but I can see it happening. Yeah. It's it's too soon to really tell or make any hard assumptions other than Thrawn being involved in the Ahsoka series. Um, Darth Snow with another super chat says... Who would win in a fight, Poe or Palpatine? <laughs> uh, uh, Palpatine wouldn't be able to go through with it, I don't think. Poe's too handsome. Poe, yeah, he Poe would sweet talk his way out of it. <laughs> um, but realistically, Palpatine would probably win that one, unless Poe had Finn at his side. Jedi Finn, maybe. Uh, oh, <laughs> Rain Man put in a super chat and said, I will defend Alex's sneezing honor as a loud sneezer and the son and grandson of loud sneezers on my mom's side. It's genetic, can't help it. Thank you. Nope, I don't agree. <laughs> Give me a doctor telling me that it's impossible to to be more quiet and that loud sneezes are impossible to prevent. Like, is this not weird to you that there's just this big gap here? I mean, I, I know the Falcon's falling apart, but like, there's just, it's finished over here and here they're like, no. Isn't that where the cockpit goes? <laughs> Alex, Mr. Star Wars explained. <laughs> 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 well, I still don't know where these go. <laughs> What's this w weird gap for? <laughs> Pretty sure I missed... I 
don't know. Those could be extra. Now, but these c convulses while sneezing, I I can understand. You, those can still be subdued, but like I'm, I know when I sneeze, I to have a tendency to kick one of my legs out. <laughs> no, no, you you. There's no reason, and that's, you should be able to control it. That's my right. tendency. I I I can do I can sneeze without doing it, but it just feels better to just let it all go. <laughs> I'm not allowed to let it all go. Not when like people are wearing headphones and you sneeze really loud and it breaks their eardrums. Phantom Jedi says, I am now the head of Star Wars Explained. Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> Ooh, Disco Mando said, what's Claude's species? Oh, right. okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, yeah, I, even I don't know Claude's species. Because he has like two lines, one line. He's he's in two scenes. Would I like a show or movie about Kix the clone after being frozen, starring Tamira Morrison? It would be awesome. I don't need a movie for that. I think it would be cool if that story popped up somewhere in a comic maybe or a book, but I don't need a movie with clones. <laughs> Darth Snow with another super chat. Who would win, an Alex Sneeze or the Death Star? Ooh, boy. Well. Oh, God. Uh. All right, I found, oh no. <laughs> I found more pieces and where they go. Oh boy. Probably gonna wrap up in about five minutes whether or not you're done with what you have to fix. That's fine. <laughs> I've got this. I'm just gonna assume that these are extra. I mean, you always have extra pieces, right? Nah. You usually get extras... <laughs> Where'd I just put those? Oh. <laughs> so, like, you usually get extras for, like, these little tiny pieces. These, uh. these one-by-ones. Because they're easy to lose. These are probably supposed to go somewhere. Just immediately gonna start... Well, it feels, I'm, I'm saying it feels sturdy. So if you're missing pieces, I don't think they were load-bearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I doubt these pieces were load-bearing, right? Oh. <laughs> I bet I know where this one goes. Or I can just slap it on somewhere. Uh, someone asked what the name of our cat is. Uh, our cat's name is Pippin. Like from Lord of the Rings. Uh, I think I'm alright. <laughs> uh, decaf Coffee with a, with a super chat says... What species native to Endor appears in Return of the Jedi, but not on Endor? Also an AI script idea, Robot Chicken Special 4. <laughs> That's funny. Um, appears in Return of the Jedi, Endor. I'll give you a hint as to who the character is. Is it in Jabba's Palace? Uh-huh. See, if... If there's no context in which they can make a question 
out of this character. Yeah. Other than this context, I probably don't know it. It's Joe Yauza. Why'd you say that in such a low voice? It's Joe Yauza. I don't know. <laughs> I was burping a little. <laughs> if you must know. Joe Yauza's from Indoor? Uh huh. Like a, a species native to Indoor? Mm hmm. Hmm. Good to know. But do you know what species he is? Mm, no. He's a yuzum. This is why he has the belt. <laughs> and we'll probably keep it. <laughs> Unless they stop asking dumb questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they have never asked questions like that, and I would love for them to. <laughs> What species is Joe Yauza? That's a dream question. Like, just for everyone Not in the audience to be like, what are they talking about? Like, who, who even is Joe Yauza? That's what people would say. Exactly. And I love that. That's fair. You, you got me. <laughs> I, would, I would give the belt back after winning it. Um, so you're done? I'm done. Okay. Uh,. Yeah, let's go eat something, and then in 30 minutes, I'm going to go to my Twitch and stream some more Resident Evil. And I'm going to go study, because that's what I do every night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go over to twitch.tv slash alexdamonlive in half an hour. I will be there streaming Resident Evil, and you can give me some scares and stuff. And oh, you're doing spooks? Yeah, if I'm going to play a spooky game, I might as well. And then we'll be on twitch again friday to talk about the latest episode of, no not friday saturday we're gonna do explain it to me on saturday on twitch for the latest episode of wandavision yeah we usually do it fridays we're doing it saturday this week because of my match mm -hmm. um but yeah the, we had so many viewers tonight so many super chats thank you guys so much uh we love doing these streams and you guys were amazing tonight. Thanks for all the trivia. Yeah, thank you so much. Trivia questions. Um, still going to debate the sneeze. <laughs> the great sneeze debate that we've started. I'm allowed to sneeze the way I want to sneeze. <laughs> um, and if you haven't already, give this video you... a thumbs up. What? Did you see Chris Fields there? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I see it. So this, this is a about the Mars rover. Chris Fields with our last Super Chat of the night, I believe. Live coverage for the Mars landing starts tomorrow at 2.15 Eastern. Lander includes rover and first Mars helicopter. Ooh. Exciting times. First flying vehicle. Alex, I don't envy <laughs> you and the extra parts. Where do they go? Where do they go? They're clearly been... supposed to go somewhere. I'll probably wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat and have to come in here and figure it out but <laughs> <laughs> all right so that is going to be it for us tonight again thank you guys so much for tuning in and yeah 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 i know more about star wars than alex does we'll see especially when we'll it comes see. to the falcon <laughs> <laughs> all right bye everyone